peeps, welcome to another video. Today it's another of the mini tutorials. I'm going to be talking you through how I use bias binding to finish the raw edge of the fabric before I seam my garments together. So let's get started. I'm using pre-bought bias binding that I get by the roll and I will link my supplier for this in the description bar down below. So the first thing, uh, this, this is actually off the end of the old roll, so that's all that's left. But I usually, what I would do is I would work from the roll, pin the bias binding on and keep the roll, in my, keep the roll down in my lap so that when I'm sewing, I just use as much as I need and then I can trim it off. So the very first thing that you wanna do is you wanna pin the right side of the bias binding, so the bit that's got no, uh, none of the raw edges visible, to the wrong side of the edge that you want to bind. And you want to make sure that the raw edges are meeting. So you're going to be sewing in this fold created here. And some people do like to press the fold flat first and because they, they find that easier. Personally, I don't. Some people also like to pin the entire way down because they find that easier. And again, personally, I don't. So. I pin the beginning because I want to make sure that everything lines up and this stuff is kind of slippery. So I'm going to sink my needle into the uh, fold there, the, the line of the crease, and just sew the whole way down. I'm going to back stitch at the start and at the finish. Okay, so when you're finished, you should end up with something that looks like this. So you have a line of stitching in that crease. You have the raw edges of the bias binding end of your garment matching up. And so the next thing that we need to do is wrap it around to the right side. So you're going to fold it over so that you have half the bias binding on the back and then half the bias binding on the front. You should just cover this line of stitching that you've done there and then we're going to sew this and I like to use my blind hem foot because it has a guide that I can run up against the edge of the binding if I move my needle over to the left that means that I'm going to ensure that I'm catching all the binding and sewing it down and it also means because I have a straight edge to run across it I have I will get a straight line of stitching as I say this is a blind hem foot but you can get an edge stitch foot which has this same guide and that you can move your needle to the right or to the left I find that because I have a very large throat space on my sewing machine this 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 works really well for me okay again this is totally down to personal preference but I don't pin my bias binding down when I'm sewing it down onto the right side or top stitching it down I with my right hand I push the fabric flat and then with my left hand I push the binding flat and I make sure that and I'm trying to do this through the viewfinder and the camera is totally in way of the actual needle so fingers crossed this is doing what it should but yeah so you push with my right right finger I push the fabric down and with my left finger I push the binding down and then as you can see I'm running this guide along this edge which is hopefully giving me a nice straight line it's covering that previous line of stitching and as I say because I have a large throat space on my machine the fact that the work is then on this side isn't a problem for me and with smaller items like this it should be fine but you may wish to get yourself a top an edge stitching foot so that you could have the work this side of the machine as is normal but this is just sort of like a way that I've kind of used over the years of all the bias binding and it works for me so I'm going to sew right down and finish all this off not the easiest thing to do with a camera in the way okay back stitch at the end okay so this does need to be now be pressed and one thing to bear in mind when you're pressing this is that it is polyester so you want to make sure that your iron is not too hot and you don't burn it ask me how i know once it's pressed you've got a lovely bias band edge that you can then seam together with your other pattern pieces something to bear in mind is that i am working with five eighths of an inch seam allowance on this pattern and my binding is coming out to three eighths of an inch once it's finished so if you have a, seam, a pattern with a smaller seam allowance you would need to bear that in mind and have a look at the width of your binding and how big the finished edge ends up being because with a seam allowance of one centimeter or three eighths of an inch this would then be in the way of actually this would be on the stitching line and it would be in the way but my seam allowance is 
five eighths of an inch, so I have plenty of room there. So if one of the things you can do is get narrower bias binding, you can make your own bias binding, of which there are many tutorials of that on uh, YouTube, and or you can increase the seam allowance on the pattern that you're using if it is smaller than you, your, your binding needs it to be. If you have any questions at all, please let me know in the comment section down below and I will do my best to answer them for you. I really hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't yet, please subscribe and I'll see you again very soon. Bye.